Transmitter device activated. Coordinate set for Earth 2. Hello everyone, welcome to the Earth 2 podcast, where we explore the pre-crisis DC multiverse and the legacy of the Golden Age characters through the Silver and Bronze Age of comics. I'm Peter Watson. I'm David Steele. Hello. Hello. So, what issue are we looking at today? Peter, I'm glad you asked. Today we're looking at um, issue 146 of Superman. That might not be what you're expecting. Um, we'd all, we've already discussed the issue of Wonder Woman, where Wonder Woman travels to Parallel Earth and meets another version of herself. Mm-hmm. And we've already discussed the story in Flash 117, where we meet the three dimwits, who you know are the first Golden Age characters to reappear in the Silver Age. So you might be expecting us to be going straight on with Flash number 123. But no, but not no, yet. No, we're actually, at the moment, we're only a couple of months ahead of the publication of Flash 123. We're in May 1961 and Superman number 146. Now, the cover of this issue is very dramatic. You have jor and Lara on Krypton as it's aflame with a young baby, well, not baby, it looks like a toddler here, kal mm. Looks about three or something, yeah. doesn't it? In the uh, spaceship, mm. jetting off to Earth. And it says the complete story of Superman's life. It reveals how Superman came from from Krypton to Earth, how he gained his amazing superpowers, how he assumed the secret identity of Clark Kent, how he met Crypto, the superdog, and how Kryptonite can destroy him. An incredibly dramatic, important tale that has to be told. But that's not the story we're going to talk about today. We're actually going to talk about the second story within this issue. Yep, and it's Superman's greatest feats. And that's feats as in achievements and things that he's done. <laughs> no, <laughs> not not the what's things in the end of his ankles, legs. Yes. <laughs> So, we see Superman out in space, hitting the planet with his sort of X-ray or telescopic vision, and the caption at the top tells us, Very often, Superman, the mightiest man on Earth, has crashed the time barrier and streaked into the distant future and into the past on important missions. However, despite all his tremendous superpowers, the Man of Steel has never been able to prevent a tragedy of the past, no matter how much he tried. Always, fate has successfully resisted his attempts to change history. But one incredible day... He finds himself able to alter the past and, as a result, performs Superman's, Superman's greatest, greatest feats. So, in a splash panel, Superman is out in space looking at a planet very much like Earth, and he's saying to himself, well, he's thinking to himself, I've travelled back into the past, and my telescopic vision reveals far off in the distance Krypton, the planet of my birth. So far, I've prevented several disasters of the past from occurring, but now if I can save the people of Krypton from perishing in the explosion that destroyed it, It'll prove once and for all that I can change history. Over the page, first panel. Uh, One day at the Daily Planet, as reporter Clark, Superman Kent, completes an article. Yep, so it's it's Clark Sartic's typewriter with his his tie, very nonchalantly. Loose tie. (laughs) Loose tie. He must be working close to a deadline, I think. Top button undone, yep. Pressure's on. Or working late. So Clark's typing away and suddenly... He gets a telepathic message. Laurie Lee Maris calling Superman from the sunken island of Atlantis. Help! Clark thinks to himself, "Uh uh-oh... That's the tele- Do I attempt to do a Christopher Reeve impression or a Dean Cain impression or a Tom Welling impression? Surprises, Steve, surprises. Or a Brandon impression? No, I won't. Um, uh-oh, Clark thinks to himself, that's the telepathic voice of Laurie, the mermaid, who was once my sweetheart. Cut to the next panel. Slipping into a deserted storeroom, Clark swiftly changes to a secret identity of the Man of Steel. And yep. of course, he is there. Yep. With his shirt open, revealing his big barrel chest, which is the way they love to draw him in the Silver Age. It's interesting, he looks very... He kind of looks like your dad, doesn't he? <laughs> it's in, he's definitely sort of been youthed over the years, hasn't he? And made, yeah, you know, definitely. Uh-huh. He's still this feeling that he's, he's you know, anyway. So it's, it's a solid like, yeah. person as opposed to a muscular yeah. person. Yeah, so yeah, Clark, yeah. Clark's thinking to himself, Laurie can send her thoughts to me and mentally pick up mine. Telepathy is sure convenient when you're dealing with people who live underwater. <laughs> I don't know, I think that would be really inconvenient if <laughs> yeah. you're just going about your daily business and suddenly someone's yeah. talking in your head. Anyway, Superman flies out to sea and there's a big boat underneath him. Yep, and Clark is thinking, what's wrong, Laurie? And she responds telepathically, a Navy destroyer is testing a new super atomic underwater depth bomb. It can completely destroy Atlantis. Hurry! A moment later underwater, and Clark is thinking, my supervision reveals the atomic depth bomb will explode in one second. Off with my invulnerable cape. So Clark's taken off his cape, and you can see a little sort of supervision sort of thing as he's noticing the canister, the red, bright red canister, sort of sinking down into the water. Indeed. As the Man of Steel swiftly encloses the bomb inside his stretched cape, Clark saying to himself, the bomb's exploding, but even its titanic force can't penetrate through my cape. And there's a couple of fish sort of swimming away yes. casually in front of him. And then Clark gets another message from Laurie. Wonderful. Please come to Atlantis so that we can thank you in person. So yes, shortly in Atlantis, 
Laurie is there saying, oh, sorry, thinking, thank you, Superman. And you've got some random old mare lady. Mer- mer- yeah, sort of. Yeah. Going, sigh, if Atlantis had not sunk beneath the waves eons ago, we would not be continually menaced by a variety of perils. If such a melodramatic way of talking, these Atlanteans, these Absolutely, savage yes. Atlanteans, don't they? I think that's what happens when you're restricted to telepathy. Yeah. You have to be as dramatic as possible. Yeah. So Clark's thinking there, if only I could have lived then to prevent it. And this is the crux of this story. Laurie and Clark converse. Gasp. Maybe there is a way you can help us. You have the ability to travel into the past or future through the time barrier, Superman. And Superman responds, I know what you're thinking, but it's impossible. You want me to travel to the past and save Atlantis from sinking to the sea? Sorry, Laurie, but I've tried to change history before and I've always failed. It's impossible. And Laurie thinks, try again, please, we beseech you. And it's, it's quite a pleading look on her face, isn't it? Quite it a pleading actually, expression. She's sort of, you know, lips are open. She's oh, staring deep into his eyes. I love how she's still got a big kind of bouffant hair, even though they're underwater. It's just special Atlantean hair products, That's probably. Not, not that you and I have to worry about hair products sort of thing, really, though, do Speak we? yourself. Anyway, you're, you're catching me up. Um, so, the next panel. Up out the ocean flies Superman. Then he streaks along at super speed. It's a fool's errand. My mission is doomed in advance, but I'll try. And as his fantastic pace hurtles him into the time barrier. So, Clark's thinking back through time, back hundreds, thousands, millions of years, back, back, back. And we get that lovely, very typical sort of Silver Age graphic, alternating sort of different coloured bands that have years written on, like one and a half million BC. conveniently placed years. Three million BC, eight, eight million, is that 800 billion? I don't know. It gets used so much, and it's a lovely little sort of conceit. It always reminds mm. me of the, do you remember the strips that Tim Quinn and Dickie Howitt used to draw for Marvel UK? And uh, Not a fan. Really, well, they're quite a long running one in Doctor Who magazine, but they also mm-hmm. looked through some other ones for some of the, the regular sort of Marvel comics. Mm-hmm. One thing to always remember is they had a, a running thing, I think it was in one of the British, British Spider-Man or Captain America comics, it was Channel 33 and a third. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah I remember that. that right. about uh-huh. and, yeah. and one thing that always sticks in my head is in one of their descriptions or visual sort of representations of the TARDIS travelling mm-hmm. in time and space, ones that had like 1969, 25, 2150 AD, uh-huh. 33 and a third <laughs> AD. This, so anytime I see one of these Clark travelling back mm-hmm. in time sort of panels, it always reminds me of that. So Clark emerges essentially from the time barrier and he sees Atlantis and he thinks that's Atlantis below, peopled by a highly advanced civilization, and its hour of doom is at hand. It's beginning to sink beneath giant waves caused by a colossal undersea earthquake. And we see Atlantis and... It's an island, isn't yeah, it? It's definitely And there's, there's all sorts of water going on around it. So we, we're on to page four. Actually, as well as... If that is Atlantis, it's sinking. There's another island or landmass in the background that also has advanced yeah. technology. Bear in mind, this is at least 8 million years BC. Yeah. So bear that in mind, folks, because it's quite interesting what they do here. The, ne- the next panel, it looks like Clark's flown onto a building site. So th- Swiftly Superman flashes to another island beyond the range of the underwater cataclysm. So this is obviously not Atlantis, yeah. this island that he's on now. You see him grabbing some metal girders and stuff, and he's saying to himself, those strange metal buildings are being torn down to be replaced by new structures. Good. I'll borrow the metal. It's made of a strange, super strong alloy. Some of the workmen on the building sites who are wearing lovely yellow jumpsuits with hard hats that have got fantastic 1950s style science fiction fins on them yeah and they're, they're, they're lovely sort of bright yellow so obviously like health and safety sort of paramounts yeah like you Absolutely, know high, high yes. vis and I'm sure they're wearing steel toed boots and they've got gloves on you know at great speeds yep. Superman constructs a fantastic mechanism so yeah Clark's thinking to himself it's hopeless I know I can't possibly save Atlantis and change history but since I promised Laurie I'd at least attempt to do so I will. A split second afterwards. And Clark has thrown loads of these beams and girders and stuff together and got a big grabbing device that you would drop into a machine at the shows to try and yeah. get a stuffed toy sort of a thing. a combination of that and a giant fishing rod. Yeah, and he's, and and he's thinking to himself, it's working. I've scooped Atlantis up just in time to keep it from sinking beneath the waves. But something is sure to go wrong now. An unexpected twist of fate will probably foil this rescue just as it always does when I try to change an event of the past. Lowering Atlantis down atop a deserted isle beyond the cataclysm, the Man of Steel speeds to investigate. And and Clark thinks the people of Atlantis are amazed, but so am I. For the first time in my career, I've succeeded in changing the past. So once again, Superman crashes through the time barrier, racing into the future. Yep, and he's back into the, the co-eccentric, alternate, brightly coloured circles. So we have 20,000 BC, 3,000 BC, 205 AD. And Clark is thinking to himself, I still can't believe it. This must have been a freak, a fluke. It can't happen again. The only way I can prove it is to try to change another event in history. So Clark's feeling a bit confident with this. I also felt like trying to do that last speech in the style of William Shatner. It was quite <laughs> statato- you know, statato- you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Soon then, as the caption tells us, as soon as Superman flies out of the time barrier and Clark is thinking to himself, well, this is ancient Rome on the very day when captive Christians who refused to worship the cruel Roman emperor were slaughtered by starving lions in the Colosseum. To be fair, I don't think that's restricted to one particular 
other day. Mm. So, anyway, yeah. never mind. So, so um, in, in the Emperor's lavish box, you've got the Roman Emperor sitting there with a great view out over the Colosseum, surrounded by his lackeys, saying, release the lions! He also has a lovely great turkey dinner right beside him. That yep. was quite delicious. Um, there's a soldier guy behind him, a lad in a cape, there's a, a nice mm. blonde lady who's gazing up at him. And as Pete says, it's the, the detail for the Colosseum is actually quite good. It's yeah, very, it's, it's nice. Mm-hmm. So then basically the next panel is Clark flying down into the Colosseum and he's saying to himself, again, I'll try to foil fate. I'll snatch away the guards' metal spears, swords and armour and see if I can prevent the massacre of these unfortunates. And we see him doing just so. Ultra rapidly, Superman crushes and refashions the metal. This always reminds me of, there's an issue of Justice League of America. John Jones is underwater. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what issue it is. It's 13, 14, 15, right about there. And he manufactures a tape record from whatever it is that he finds just you know the rocks and the sand and the bits of seaweed and stuff as you do so Clark has taken the armour and you know helmets and shields and stuff and has very quickly and very effectively he's constructed a tremendous steel cage and he says to himself now to get really busy and as, as he's doing this we can see the lions running into the amphitheatre and there's a few people standing about then at super speeds he becomes a super lion tamer yep and in the, in the background of the panel we see Clark shepherding the, the lions into the cage that he's built and there's consternation and uproar in, in the emperor's box and, and, and the emperor's saying I must flee that awesome defender of the captive martyrs and he's running past his uh, two lovely ladies that are with him. But yep, in, the, the in the foreground, there's a fantastic uh, Roman centurion running the other way, who's very much like the guy in the front of Action Comics number one. Yes, who's, absolutely. He's running away from Superman, I throw, if, throwing the camera yeah, at his head. I'm out of here. <laughs> so the Emperor falls over. Oh no. You sound so concerned for the Emperor's welfare there, Pete. Well, you know, it's, it's health and safety. He's obviously it. a bad man. He's not wearing one of the high-vis vests. That's true. So, yes. The, the guy behind him, maybe he's bouncer, he's, he's wearing a quite a high-vis sort of looking cape. He so, is. anyway, the, the Emperor goes over. Uh, yeah. Stop, fools! You will trample me! I, the Emperor of the Roman Empire, command you to stay! Yeah! Uh, so, yep. So, we can assume he gets trampled to death. So, has, is that another way that Clark might have changed history? I, I would but, say but they so. Don't, they don't tell us which emperor it is. So that's... No, it's very woolly. It's, well, it is the only yeah. day, you know, the Christians were fed to the lions. Yeah, yeah. So check your history books, folks. So, yeah, I mean, if your knowledge of Christian versus lion mortality rates is good and you've got actual statistics to back that up, write in and let us know. Absolutely, yes. And quickly, reconstructing dozens of chariots into one mammoth chariot. What? what? <laughs> the Man of Steel speeds off with the martyrs. And Clark's thinking, I saved them all. Once again, I succeeded in changing history, though I was never able to do so before. Why should things suddenly be different now? And why should he have to break them all into one big giant chariot? Maybe it's just, maybe it's just easier to put one chariot along. It'd take more time to actually build the chariot. He did it quickly, look. It okay. says, so you must have... Okay, oh. fair enough. Anyway. This is Silver Age Superman, he can do anything. He can! It just seems a bit too much effort. Anyway, presently, in a distant woods, far from Rome... Yeah, we see the, the Christians sort of waving off and Clark's flying away and he's, you know, sort of, you'll be safe here. Off he goes. And once again, Superman flashes through the time barrier. So, and the years that flash up this time are 450 AD, 1500 AD and 1775 AD. It's closer to the present. As he flashes along, Clark is thinking to himself... One of the saddest events in American history was the execution of Nathan Hale by British soldiers during the Revolutionary War, after Hale admitted he was a spy for the Continental Army. Now, I didn't know that. That's news nope, to me. That we news we to didn't me. get that at school. The, the Time Tunnel didn't do an episode about that. That's true. You know? Yeah, there's not been an Doctor Who about that. There wasn't a quantum leap when Sam jumped along his genetic heritage <laughs> line and nope, saved Hale. So as I didn't really know much about Nathan Hale, I looked him up. So yes, Nathan Hale was born 6th of June 1955. And died indeed in the very day that it states in this comic, the 22nd of September 1776. He was an American soldier and a spy for the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War. He volunteered for an intelligence gathering mission in New York City, but was captured by the British and executed. Uh, Hale has long been considered an American hero, and in 1985 he was officially designated the state hero of Connecticut. Interesting. Now, there's actually several sites claimed to be the uh, actual place where he was hanged. They've got a list of five of them here. They've been five main contenders. There's the corner of 66th and 3rd Avenue in Manhattan. There's City Hall Park. There's actually inside the Grand Central Terminal. There's the Yale Club at 44th Street and Vanderbilt Avenue. And there's Bergen Beach in Brooklyn as well. Yeah. So... This looks, How many times did they hang him? I know. This looks mostly like it's going to be City Hall Park. They're going for the theory in right. this as it is in a park. Interesting. Back to the story. Emerging from the time barrier, the Man of Steel flashes to an apple orchard in New York. And tell us what we see, Peter. We <laughs> see two British soldiers uh, putting a noose 
around a rather smartly dressed man's neck on the gallows. There you go. Yeah, it's interesting that I was saying there, but there was never an episode of the Time Tunnel. He looks a bit like James Darwin. <laughs> That's quite funny. Does it actually? Does it, you know? Yeah. Maybe. So anyway, right, so so Clark is observing this from behind a tree and he's thinking to himself, today is Sunday, September the 22nd, 1776, and that's Captain Hale on the gallows, about to speak his last words before he's hung. And he says, what's quoted as his final words, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. Now, and this apparently actually looks more like Clint Eastwood. <laughs> So oh, I should he does, doesn't voice. it? So, okay. um, so Clark's thinking from off camera, gallant words. Clark's obviously moved. Can I save him? When I was a teenage superboy, I once travelled into the past in an effort to prevent the assassination of President Lincoln, but... And then we flash back. We get a sort of nice bubble panel, and Clark continues to think, I encounter criminal scientist Luther heading out in the past where he journeyed in a time machine, and the panel sort of has uh, a nice Silver Age thick set, overweight, baldy Lex Luthor. Adult Lex Luthor. Yes, and he's, yes. And he's saying to, to, to young teenage Superboy, Ha, ah, you're paralysed with red kryptonite, which always affects you unpredictably. And, and teenage Clark is thinking to himself, Grown, he doesn't realise I've journeyed into this year to rescue Lincoln, not to capture Luthor. Quite and, um, we did yeah, very well there. Yeah, and um, that's actually there's not there's not a footnote to tell us, but that's actually a flashback to issue eighty five of Superboy, mm-hmm. which was published only a few months ahead of this, um, in October nineteen sixty. So that's about yeah. six seven months before this issue of Superman. So that's quite in, quite interesting. Isn't it? And also, it's very unusual to have an adult Luther up against Superboy. Yeah. Very. Usually it's, uh, you know, Superman and, and adult Luther and, or teenage Luther and yeah. Superboy. <clears throat> yep. So yes, very unusual story. So obviously yeah. that was uh, fresh in their minds at this time. Absolutely. So Clark it dissolves back to, to Clark in the, the present, well, in 1776, and he's still lurking behind the tree and he's thinking, because of that unexpected twist of fate, i.e. Luthor, I failed to prevent the murder of Abraham Lincoln. Therefore, I shouldn't be able to save Hale either. However, I've just rescued Atlantis and some Roman martyrs, and so by golly, I may be able to save Nathan Hale too. That was definitely a Brandon Routh yes. Superman line, that, yes, wasn't it? Yes, definitely. Brandon style of the atom rather than Superman, <laughs> I think. So, streaking quickly in, Superman frees Hale from the noose. Yeah, and it's quite a, quite a difficult panel to describe here, actually. Yeah, it's a super speed blur slash cloud of smoke, I would yeah. say. And um, Clark is, in, in the amongst of all this, Clark is thinking... Back among the trees we'll go. I'll put on Captain Hale's garments and take his place on the gallows. I've raised a cloud of dust to confuse onlookers. They'll think it's due to a sudden breeze. And then a moment later, as the dust settles... Hale's off panel, thinking, Incredible! Someone is in my place, waiting to die. Yet, I'm here, minus my clothing. Can this be gulp witchcraft? He's in the noddy! Yes, it's the you first, don't see that, you just see his face. It's the first, it's the first implied full nudity on the Earth 2 podcast. We yeah, only apologise for that. So... <laughs> Apart from obviously ourselves. Who yes. Are, who are really <laughs> so what's the... So yes, yeah, seconds afterward, as the hanging begins... And it's, a, it's a couple of really quite reedy and nasty looking British soldiers. Very and, big nose soldiers yeah, as well. So we do comedy style English accents. And one of them says... Gasp. He looks comfortable as he hangs. Why doesn't the Yankee spy die? <laughs> and then off camera we hear Clark saying, I'm just being uncooperative, I guess. A talking hanging man? Impossible. <laughs> Cut him down. If a rope can't kill him, a firing squad will. Yep, and then, um, so it's, and, but, you know, so Clark, as Hale, is lined up against the tree. And several shots from and, three rifles and, go off. And we hear one of the soldiers Bouncing saying, off his chest. Gah! <laughs> bullets don't kill him either. They're bouncing off the rebel. And Clark says, do it again, it feels good, it tickles. So we now move on to page eight. Fleeing, the Redcoats fail to see Superman soar overhead with the real Nathan Hale. Now Superman's put uh, Nathan Hale's clothes back on, yep, which is good, and put his own clothes back on. Yep, and one of the soldiers has run out of panels, and there's a voice from off panel saying, Is this an omen that we're doomed to lose this war? So Clark, spoilers, no, yep. they do. Nathan Hale right. is thinking, This astounding being has returned my garments to me, and now we're flying. I'm glad they did it in that order. Yes. Yes. Anyway, after taking Nathan Hale to safety, Superman flashes through the time barrier. We'd skip the, the rainbow yep. things now. You don't give us uh, that this time. To Little Bighorn, Montana, on June 25th, 1876. So he's gone from 1776 to 1876. He's only skipped forward 100 years. And exactly. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That looks like Cosmic Boy <laughs> lying on the ground in front of him. Oh, it does actually, yes. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's obviously the way they've chosen to, to colour mm-hmm. in the native population. So Clark is thinking to himself again, now to prevent another tragedy in history, the massacre of General Custer's men. 
First I'll borrow this fallen Indian's war bonnet. Yes, and he takes the headdress off of a yep. Native American yep. there. So, um, so Peter, do you have do you have any facts about Little Bighorn before we get started in this bit? One or two. Uh, although Super- Superman here has appeared on June 25th, the battle actually took place over two days, June 25th and 26th. There were between 1,500 and 2,500 Native Americans from the North Cheyenne tribe and the Arapaho tribe together uh, up against the 700 cavalrymen that were led by uh, General Custer. So yeah, in the ensuing battle, uh, between 31 and 136 figures are really of Native Americans were killed and up to 100. 160 were wounded uh, and the cavalrymen lost 265 in the battle uh, 55 were wounded and then of, later on six of those wounded died as well so as you can see it's quite a massacre yep for, well for everyone involved really. yeah 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 no so, one wins no one no. wins really do they absolutely not so clark has picked up the headdress and heads off that's and... at super speed the man of steel digs a protective moat about the cornered men of the seventh cavalry regiment and there's some, some Red Indians sort of overlooking and one of them saying, someone is saving the pale-faced soldiers, Chief Sitting Bull. I think it's the Eagle God. No, it must be a pale-faced trick. Slay the false god. So that, that must be Sitting Bull in the yellow, I guess. Looks like so, it, yeah. So we get a nice long shot of out over the desert and the, the cavalry guys all sort of clustered together and Clark's digging a big hole into the ground and all around them and then we move on to the next panel. Easily Superman's X-ray vision melts the shower of bullets and arrows. Interesting, they're referring itself to X-ray vision here mm. as opposed to heat vision. Yeah. Because originally it was said that his heat vision was the heat of his X-ray vision. Right. So they're still using that here. Yep. So we're still not quite... Yeah. Silver so we, we've, got, we've got Clark in the, in the headdress and the, the Indians are letting loose with their bows and arrows. Hoy, he must be a great spirit. Our warriors cannot kill him. Clark is thinking to himself, hmm, I'll make a giant pipe out of that mound of clay and give them a real scare. And he blooming does? Yeah, this is... This is insane. This this has not aged well. Uh, <laughs> moments yeah. later, after Superman builds a mammoth pipe, stuffs it with dry grass and lights it with his x-ray vision. Now, this is, this is incredible. Clark is still wearing the, the headdress mm-hmm. and he's standing on top of a... a is it a butte? A butte or whatever. Yeah, and, he, and there's literally... I it's mean, like a mile-long pipe. Yeah, we will um, we will include this panel, I think, in the yes. in the socials uh-huh. when this one goes up. And, um, and he's, it's a big, nice, long shot of Clark blowing down this mile-long pipe. Down towards the moat that he's dug yeah. around. And um, it's resting on top, obviously, of the moat. And the Indians are sort of they're running away. Uh, I flee before Eagle God destroys us. And Clark thinks to himself, Custer's men are saved. Now to prevent another great historical tragedy. More importantly, everyone was saved. On Hooray! both sides. Yeah, I mean on both sides. The, so the, there we are. The repercussions and sort of, of all all of that he's doing here is are enormous. Uh-huh. You know, Hale doesn't die, so which means mm-hmm. he's well at that point. So presumably Hale is then not going to be regarded as a hero. Mm-hmm. Custer's being robbed of his sort of noble The Time Tunnel did do um General Custer though. Did they? Yeah, okay. It's a good one. Um, yeah, it's interesting. That, you, know, you know, Clark, he's not really given a lot of thought to you know, the, consequen- yeah, yes. the consequences of what he's doing. It's interesting mm-hmm. now. He's, I wonder what the thinking process of whoever wrote the story was. Which mm-hmm. historical events were they thinking about trying to educate the kids who yeah. were reading? Or were they just thinking, right, this gives us an excuse to draw cowboys mm-hmm. and Indians or have a pop at the English? Or, you know, I don't know. Indeed. Anyways, uh, also, so, what is interesting yes. is that... As he's coming forward in time, because he starts the furthest away in time. As he's coming forward in time, he's not actually seeing any of any repercussions of anything he's already done. Mm-hmm. It's not changing anything. Like saving heel doesn't change the battle of Little Bighorn. It doesn't change yeah. any events that lead to that. You yeah. know, because these things all kind of spiral out. So mm. you know, interesting. Anyway, back into the rainbow energies of the time stream. Tossing away the war bonnet, the Man of Steel speeds into the time barrier. Right, so now Clark is thinking to himself, now to prevent one of history's greatest tragedies, the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. So emerging from the time barrier on the evening of April the 14th, 1865, Superman speeds to the President's box at the Ford Theatre. We see um, John Wilkes Booth, who's in the midst of saying what he's about to say. Six Semper, oh! <laughs> Not to right, So, yeah, Clark's gone back 11 years here, hasn't he? He's gone back a little bit in time. From Bighorn. So, yeah, so Clark catches John Wilkes Booth in the act and says, I've crossed John Wilkes Booth's gun just in time. Although, to be honest, from the picture, it looks like he's crushed his hand. Yeah. Uh, so, and obviously, John Wilkes Booth was originally saying Six Emperor Tyrannus, which is Latin for bad outcomes should befall tyrants. So, there you go, a bit of education. Yeah, yep, there you go. Don't, don't say we're not telling you anything you didn't know already. So, Instead, um, he says... Bad outcomes should befall. Ah, my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, bad, a bad outcome has befallen his hand because does, he was trying yeah. to kill the president. Yeah, so, um, President Lincoln and Clark have a little chat. Thank you for saving my life. <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> um, and Clark said, thinking to himself, 
It feels wonderful to have rescued such a fine man. Great Scott, I've just had a terrific inspiration. Before that, Pete's going to tell us a little bit about how this kind of falls in with DC Comics time travel rules. Yes, now, it's slightly different after Crisis of Infinite Earths. There are different time travel rules. But during this time, it was kind of the guideline that if a character goes to a period of time in which they already exist... And then they can't interact with anything. They're basically just floating about as an observing ghost. Right. So we've already established that Superboy exists in this President Lincoln timeline trying to save him. Yep. Although he's frozen by Lex Luthor, so he can't. So Superman should not be able to interact with anything there. He should yeah. be floating about as a ghost. Yeah. Bear that in mind yes. for the end of this story. Bear that in mind. And also bear that in mind for why we're covering this story as mm. well. Yep. So yes, back into the time barrier, Hurtle Superman. So we see Clark smashing through 1931, 1932, 1933. Again, that's a great panel. I like that one a lot. Yeah. Clark is saying to himself, since I can now change history... I'll accomplish the mightiest feat of all. I'll return to Krypton before it exploded and save all the inhabitants of the planet where I was born, including my Kryptonian parents, Jor-El and Lara. But as he emerges, then streaks through the outer space. So Clark is out in space and that, and he's thinking, "Uh uh-oh, my telescopic vision reveals Krypton's red sun in the far distance. I must retreat or lose my superpowers. I'm only super near yellow suns. Like, oh, that's a very good point. If he goes to Krypton in the past, mm-hmm. then he's not going to be super. So and, uh, he won't be able to get back into the sign barrier. Yep. Basically, he's not thought this through. He hasn't. He's so been very, he's been very impulsive. Yes. Returning to Earth, Superman uses his powers to swiftly build a fleet of spaceships. Yeah, it's another John John's underwater tape recorder effort. Clark yeah. is thinking, now I've built a space fleet out of the wreckage of sunken ships. Now to send the fleet to Krypton, guided by automatic controls. And we see... Uh, you know, <laughs> that's one of those things. It's like, if he can do stuff like that, uh-huh. why is he not, like... Doing it all the time. Doing it all the time, or curing world, world hunger, or... I don't know. Because anyway. he's too busy teaching Jimmy Olsen life lessons yeah, at or, this stage. Yeah, or winding up Lois Lane. Yeah. So we see a, a beach and some, some rudimentary tools actually lying there. Yeah. And we, we see half a dozen kind of, like, torpedo-like uh, spaceship. Yep. Uh, lovely, lovely green spaceships. So hopefully it's made more than that, because you're not going to fit many people in, into that fleet. Yep. So, so later, as the space fleet reaches Krypton... And a, a laddie in a sort of blue vest and shorts and a yellow cape, you know, and helmet that he maybe borrowed from the, the health and safety lads in Atlantis. Oh, yeah, you're right. He runs in, and, and it's and jor there. And so the, the boy runs in, and he says... This note to you was in one of the empty ships, jor It's written in our Kryptonese language. And jor saying, Strange, it's signed Superman. He claims to be my infant son, grown to adulthood, and that he sent these ships to save us. The note may be a prank, but the spaceships aren't. We'll flee doomed Krypton at once. jor famously the one person you yeah. know, that knew Krypton was going to explode. Yeah. So let's assume this is at the stage in which he's actually discovered that. Yeah. So, once again, history has changed as the entire population of Krypton escapes moments before the planet explodes. Yep, and and they seem to escape in ten yep, rocket ships. We see, the, we see the rocket ships flying away as Krypton blows up. And when the space fleet lands on Earth, we see um, some Kryptonians getting out of one of, the, yep. one of the spaceships there. And Clark is thinking, choke, the survivors of Krypton are emerging. There's zor and his wife, who will someday become the parents of Supergirl. Gasp, and that girl behind him, she's Lila. Lila Lerol. There's a quite attractive blonde lady behind the the future Supergirl's parents there. And then we cut to Clark having a little flashback sort of memory panel. And he's standing holding hands with the attractive blonde lady and they're in front of a nice sort of rainbow bridge. Which type. isn't a sign barrier yeah. for a change in this And story. Clark is thinking to himself, Lila Lerol, a, a beautiful Kryptonian actress. Once when I accidentally returned to Krypton through the time barrier, we fell in love. But we were torn apart by a cruel twist of fate. And of course she's got a double L name. Yep. There's quite a lot of twists of fate in this story. Yeah. Suddenly, a startling shock. But now I see my parents, jor and Lara. But great guns. Who's that with them? Oh no, it can't possibly be. <gasps> it's me! When I was their child, baby Kal-El. And sure enough, he can see himself with his parents as they emerge from the spaceship. Which also is the whole phantom thing yeah. of being the same person in two time zones. Yeah, and so Clark, the same time zone, yeah. say. And Clark's continuing to think, I can't understand it. Since I saved my parents, it wasn't necessary for them to send me alone to Earth on my experimental rocket ship. This is impossible. I can't possibly exist in two bodies, both as a child and as an adult at the same time. It's contrary to all laws of science. Something is very, very wrong. Indeed. And Superman's flying Flying away away just now and the Kryptonians are all waving after him. And once again, ahead into the future, through the time barrier, speeds Superman. And we see him flying past. They look like he's flying past big sheets of paper with the years written on them. Yes. 1958, 59, 60, 1960. Into the present of 1961. And Clark is thinking, I must return to the present. 
Perhaps I can find the answer to this baffling time mystery in the history books. They should be changed now because, after all, I changed history. But in a 1961 library, the mystery deepens. And, of yep. course, Superman is in a library surrounded by books, piles yep. of books. Big volume open in front of him and he's saying, Great guns, this is incredible. The history books are unchanged. There is no record of my having rescued Atlantis. According to these history books, the Roman slaves were slain by those lions. Nathan Hale, General Custer and Abraham Lincoln weren't saved by me. And my rescue of Krypton's people isn't mentioned at all. So we see that Clark's actually at the public library. Um, because in the next panel we see him flying out the window and he's saying to himself, this is mad. <laughs> According to historical records, I didn't change history yet. I know I did. Surely the books are truthful. Then what can the explanation be? I must find out. And entering the time barrier again, Superman observes. So he's surrounded by this sort of red and gold sort of whirling energy and he says to there himself. There seems to be two whirlwinds yeah. of rainbows. Yep. And Clark is saying to himself, a time trap, like a whirlpool, it's whisking me into a parallel time barrier. Here we go. In my haste, I overlooked this bridge between time barriers when I went through it. It's a phenomenon I've never encountered before. And he re-enters 1961. Fantastic, thinks Clark to himself. The parallel time barrier exists in another universe. Bingo. And this other universe is the exact twin of the universe I really live in. So, uh, Superman visits a library in the twin universe. Clark's looking at a history book and he can see a representation drawing of himself. sort of Crushing Wilkes John Wilkes yeah. Booth's hand. Um, Clark thinks, gasp, the history books in this duplicate universe have been changed. There are drawings of me saving Lincoln. And Custer too. And we see a drawing in another book of him digging the big hole. But before he can investigate further... Clark's saying, what? Everything's quivering. I've got to get out of this twin universe immediately. And there's a slight ripple effect going on in, on the window panel in front of him. Yep. So, back hurtles Superman across the time bridge. Yep, faster, faster, says Clark to himself. The, the existence of an entire universe is at stake. And you see him flying out of one rainbow whirlwind mm. into another one. And as Superman returns to the year 1961 in his own universe. Now I understand, thanks Clark. As he flies back, you can see the skyline of Metropolis yep. in the background. And he's, and, and he's receiving a, a telepathic message from Laurie Lamaris. Laurie mentally calling Superman, please come to Atlantis again. And yep. soon in watery Atlantis, the Atlantides read Superman's thoughts. So Clark's flying down. Laurie's sort of perched there looking very lovely. And Clark's saying, thinking at Laurie, I succeeded in changing history in that other twin universe, Laurie, because its laws of science differ from ours. Their history can be changed. Here it cannot. However, my tampering with that twin universe's time pattern has caused cosmic disturbances there. I don't dare ever return there again, as it might result in unknown dangers for both universes. And Laurie thinks, odd, in that twin universe, Atlantis never sank. And you saved the lives of your parents as well as the entire population of Krypton. Clark's thinking, true. Yet in our universe, it never happened. And Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's finish the chat. You know, it's not, <laughs> I'll, I'll text you later. You know, um, so then we get Superman wistfully looking out across the bay at Metropolis in the background. Yep, um, as, as he returns to the surface world, how different life must be in that duplicate universe where my Kryptonian parents and Lila are alive on Earth. I wonder if I'll ever be able to return there. I wonder. What a great story! Yes, so so, so much fun. Admittedly, parts of it have not aged well, <clears> but <throat> that's uh, just to be expected. Hopefully that explains why we did that one instead of jumping straight onto Flash 1, 2, 3 because it was Superman visiting a parallel Earth. Yep, before uh, any of the Flashes did. Yep. So, yeah. so, as far as we're aware, this universe is not revisited uh, no. again. But yeah, fascinating story. Wouldn't it be interesting if that had been the, the same parallel time continuity that Princess Tara had lived in? Oh, um, her world was quite different. No? Yeah, so, yeah. Be, you know, I think it was the establishment of Diana travelled in time or anything. But no, it was um, obviously the bulk of what we're going to be doing is going to be the, the Earth 2 Justice Society involved stories. But obviously we're going to we're going to cover other parallel universe stories yes. as, they, as they come along. Just mm-hmm. to kind of, as Pete was sort of suggesting when we were sort of planning it all, just to give you an idea of everything that was, the way the editorial teams were thinking and mm-hmm. how the concept was being used. Yep, and how different people... Do it differently. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Re- it's really a, it's a fascinating study so far. So, mm. yes. So, now the response to that issue of Superman. Funny enough, the letters page that you get a couple of months later uh, mostly focuses on the primary story right. in the issue, mm-hmm. which, because obviously that's a big recap of you know Superman's entire history. Yep. But there are a couple of letters that uh, refer to Superman's greatest feats. The first one is from Rex Peterson from Minneapolis. And he that's says, big. Dear editor, you goofed. In the July issue of Superman Comics, you show Sitting Bull ready to lead an attack against Custer. Well, it wasn't Sitting Bull who led the attack. It was Chief Rain in the face. There's a response from the other who says, we suggest you read the letter below. And then the next letter reads, um, Dear Editor, you made a mistake in the story, Superman's Greatest Feats. You state the leader of the attack was Sitting Bull. According to my encyclopedia, 
The leader of the party was the chief crazy horse. And that's from Steve Marshall in Atlanta. Yep. And the editorial response is, we suggest you read the letter above. Yes. Now, so, with all of the 21st century research at our disposal, Pete's done some digging. Yeah, a little bit. According to Wikipedia, that great source of knowledge, the leaders of the Native Americans at the Battle of Little Big Horn were Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse, Chief Gaul, Lame White Man and Two Moon. So, yeah. Yeah, there we go. No mention there hopefully, of... Uh, hopefully if um, Rex, Rex and Steve are listening, yes. that'll provide a bit of clarification for right, them. Right in and let us know. Yep. So, yeah, as you said, great story. Yep. Another Lots another another parallel earth. And um, don't worry, we're getting there. <laughs> yes. So, that wraps up our discussion of Superman 146. But we'd love to hear what you think about the story. You can get in touch with us at the Earth 2 podcast at gmail.com and we might even give you a shout out on the show. So you can follow us on Facebook at the Earth 2 podcast and we're also on Twitter at podcast underscore Earth 2. That's the number two. So podcast underscore E-A-R-T-H 2. And we're on Instagram as well. So thanks for joining us on our journey and we're going to talk to you next time on the, the Earth, Earth 2 podcast. podcast. Transmatter cube activated. Return coordinates set for Earth Prime.